Most newcomers, when they fire up a laser, they guess at some random power and speed values, and they pray. The truth here is that with a power range from 10 to 100% and a speed from 1 to 600 millimeters a second, your odds of nailing the perfect material settings are worse than flipping heads on a coin 16 times in a row. I'm going to show you my simple workflow that finds perfect settings on any material in minutes without giant test grids or eating up material. Let's dial it in. So if you are starting with a brand new material, you really are going to be stuck because you're not going to know any of these settings and you're going to do what a lot of people do. You're going to go off and do a, a, a Google search and you're going to get some result back that says, oh, here's the settings. And then you'll figure out, oh, it's for a diode laser and I have a CO2 or it's 20 watts of a laser and I have a 40 watt laser. So none of that's going to work. And then you'll do what's next. The obvious next choice is go talk to somebody. And I get asked this question at least 10 times a week. And my answer up to this point has always been the same, which is, oh, just run a material test and everything will be fine. You'll figure it out. But the problem is that's essentially saying start in the middle and hope for the best. And I got called out on this yesterday by, by Jim. I'm posting his message here. He's a longtime viewer uh, and channel member, and I've gotten to know him. We've talked quite a bit on calls and in, through email. And he knows how to run a material test, but he doesn't know where to start. And it's no wonder he's frustrated because it's taking too much time and he's actually wasting material. So think of trying to find these settings for a tumbler and that's costing him, you know, upwards of $20, $25 for that. So I want to help him stop that and hopefully you get some value out of this too, because I'm going to walk you through my workflow for taking an unknown material, running those material tests in a, in a sane way, we'll say, and figuring out those ideal settings and, and then how to retain them so that you can keep them forever. Now to show you how all of this works, I'm going to use this Commarker 60 watt Mopa laser. It's a Galva laser, which is close to what Jim is running. So uh, that's why I chose this one, but this should work on any laser. So if you have a diode laser, uh, you'll be able to do this. I'll tell you things here that are unique to fiber lasers so you can skip those. You won't have to worry about frequency or Q pulse, for example, but this will get you going. Now, as far as material, I chose this piece of matte three millimeter acrylic. I use a lot of this, so I know the characteristics, but I'll start from first principles. Now I'm going to jump over into light burn and that octopus is going to be important later. So pay attention. I'm just going to jump into the material settings here and I'm going to choose whatever light burn gives me for defaults. And you can see it's, it's the speed is a hundred millimeters a second up to a thousand and the power is 10% up to a hundred percent just a speed versus power. And I'm just going to engrave this uh, on, on this piece of acrylic. Happened to come out fairly nicely. Now I'm just going to freeze it here so you can see the result. The, the bottom row, the 100, per, the 100 millimeters a second is probably a little slow because you can see at the high end there, it's bubbled up. And above 700, uh, the values really aren't that useful. So uh, that's important. Now also notice that the 10% column on the power is virtually invisible. So we'll assume that 10% doesn't work here. So then I'll do another iteration. I'll pop back into light burn. I'll change the minimum power to 20% because we know it's not good below that. I'll change the maximum speed to, uh, to 700 millimeters a second, and those are good values. So I'll rerun this test. And when I run the second test, it's definitely better, but you can see up around 500 millimeters per second beyond that, it's not really adding much value. And then below 40% uh, on the power looks a little a little grim. So I'll zoom in a little bit more. I'll change those values. So the maximum power I'll change to 500 and the minimum power to 40. And I'll, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll run that test again. And when I do, uh, I'll actually just freeze it here so you can see it. So right around 300 millimeters a second and around 75% is looks like a pretty decent value. So I think I'll go with those as, as the default power and speed. And at this point, we're pretty much done with the heavy lifting. We've started from a really broad range of power and speeds, and we've narrowed that down through a couple of tests to something that we can work with. And... If you have a diode laser, really, that's the only thing you have to do because power and speed are the only things a diode laser typically has. Now, you could play with interval 
and increase or decrease the density of the lines being engraved, and that'll make things either either brighter or dimmer if you, in the case of decreasing. And you can play with that on your own. For the most part, though, that would be specific to a, a particular job, not a general setting. Now, in this particular case here, because I want to actually work with this Galvo laser, I have some extra work to do. And that is to figure out now the best frequency and the best uh, uh, Q-pulse settings. But before I do that, I'm going to go edit the material settings in the in the material test here, and I'm going to save the speed and power settings that I determined in those previous tests. And that means when I run a new test, I'll use those settings. But in the material test, I'm actually going to change the parameters we're testing against. So I'll change the first one to frequency and the second one to Q pulse, just so we can see what varying these things does with the power and speed that we've chosen. When I run a test, you'll see that a good chunk of this test is, is now way too much power, but I did find some good values in, in for the frequency around 20, and for the Q pulse, uh, 130 looked like a good value there. So that's all I had to do. Now the, the test is set up here, and I can run a proper image test, and that's where the octopus comes back in. Uh, he's a good simple test that we can run, and I'll run that test, and you can see it comes out actually really nice. Now, not to be outdone, I wanted to take one extra test here, so I did the creepy clown, and when I look at that, uh, again, it's it's much more detail, so it, you, you really want to run this test as well, and you can see the result there is now awesome. So I now have a material that I can run on my, in this case, my Galvo laser. I zoomed in to the, to the right settings, and I can, I can now engrave this material anytime I want and not have to worry about running those tests again. So the last thing I want to do here is make sure I don't lose this setting. So I have it set on a layer because I engraved the octopus and I can go to the material library tab that's down at the bottom. Now the Kurt tree here is currently empty, but I can say create a, a material from a current layer. And then I can just add some detail here. So the material I'm working with is acrylic. I'm going to say the, the title of this is matte black acrylic. And then for the description, I can enter anything I want. I'll just enter the same thing just to make it easy. Now that actually saves the value when I click OK. You can see it there in the tree, but I wanna save this library as a file on, on my computer. And I can just click the new down in the bottom there and enter a name. In this case, I'll just call the library Steve Makes Everything and uh, click OK, and now that library is saved. So anytime I want to do something, I can pull it down on the tree there, you can see it, and I can select my acrylic. If I want to do this matte acrylic, I select that and, and expand that, and you'll see the engrave. Now you can also do cuts in here. You can add anything you want, and it's really just a case of selecting that and selecting the layer I want, and and now that layer gets set with those settings from the library. So it's really that simple. And uh, hopefully, Jim, this solves your problem and anyone else who's who's struggling with this. Uh, if it doesn't, feel free to leave a comment down below. Maybe let me know if this helped you or whether you still need a little more information. And uh, with that, I'll wind down and I'll say get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.